This next segment where we ask each other questions, I've got a question for you this time, and it's based off a conversation that you and I had had previously. And so it just kind of cropped up in the old mind skull again. I was like, follow up with Riley on this. You told me sometime in the not too distant uh, past that I believe it was as we were discussing Ahsoka, okay. the show, okay? You said Star Wars exhausts you. I'd love to learn more about that. Tell me more, like, help me understand why Star Wars exhausts you. I mean, this is the nicest, like, most complimentary way possible. And literally a thoughtful response on your part. I don't think I've ever heard anybody else say that Star Wars exhausts them. I mean, I've heard people say it's not my jam or I've kind of fallen out of favor with it. But it exhausts you. Tell me more. It it burns me out. Yeah. Like, I have to be in the right mood. And that's just, that just might be also partially my personality. Because sometimes with the ADHD, you can hyper-focus on stuff. Sure, because sure. there was an entire month a couple of years ago where I was very obsessed with magic tricks. And so I just watched magic tricks every night before bed for like an hour and a half. Nice. You know how many Penn and Teller fool us clips I've seen? Too many. So proud of you. And I, guess what? I don't remember any of them. Well, I could well, watch well, them again and still be amazed. <laughs> That's just how it works. Great. But with Star Wars, I, I think it just might be like, I don't know. Like Mandalorian, I don't get burned out of. And sure. I think it's because it's different. I think with the original and the prequel and then the extension of the Clone Wars, I think maybe it just drags a little bit. Because mm. that was kind of the whole thing with the prequels, is it dragged and dialogue is very important to me. Yep. As like a yep. writer, communicator. Yep. Like and when I have to hear a whole 20 minute spiel on why Anakin Skywalker doesn't like sand, I get bored. Oh. But like even with like Clone Wars though, and I've noticed this with other shows, but like Clone Wars, I think that show, there were just some episodes where I was like, why is this important? Yep. Like, yep. I don't do well with shows that like are just like one episode, that's a story, mm. and then like if there's no there's very little continuity running through the show. Right. If the yeah. story isn't driven from episode one all the way to twenty four, and right. like I said, you can go off on your little yep. tangents or whatever. But I mean, and anime is notorious for this. Anime will because of the way that it works over there, sometimes the show catches up with the book because they'll do the show like two years later after they found out the yeah. manga is successful. Yeah. So then the show will catch up. And so they have one or two options. It's either they keep the show going right. and make up make stuff until content. the book gets ahead again. Yep. Or they put it on hiatus, let it go again, and then start the show again. Sure. And I've seen both. Sure. Let me tell you, the amount of filler, because this is what they call it, it's filler. It is like Naruto, okay, one of the top three, four animes yep. ever, uh, had at least 40 episodes that had nothing to do with anything. Right. And I watched them, but I hated it. And so, and I think that's, and I think that might just be it for Clone Wars. I think sometimes there are some episodes that introduce characters where I'm like, I don't care about this person. Yep. Like, and then there were other episodes where it's like Obi-Wan, they introduce like this love interest for Obi-Wan. And it goes back and forth with this concept of him giving up the four or get, giving up the Jedi order. Right. He, yep. he legitimately thought about giving up the, the Jedi to be with her. Right. And he couldn't do it because he's the Jedi was more important to him in his journey. And so he had to give her up. But they definitely still love each other. And so it makes that whole relationship complicated. But I like seeing that, like that. Yeah. That's I love Obi-Wan. So right. to see him get more screen time, mm -hmm. great. But when I get like some like like background character or yeah. something getting like yeah. 10 minutes, and I think that's just I think that's just the way it goes with Star Wars for me. Mm. But like I so, know. like, Star Wars just, for you, doesn't always strike that balance of, hey, here's why this matters, right? right. It almost gets a little too lost in its own world well, at it, times. Sometimes I think it just, like, I think it tries too hard. Sure. Like, sure. the original trilogy, fantastic. It, I'm, it has its problems, I'm sure. 
I couldn't go back through and be like, oh, right there. Yeah, I mean, there's but, I, I've rewatched it several years ago, and there's certainly portions of it that more than anything just haven't aged very well. Right. And not I don't mean from a visual point of view, I just mean from a storytelling point of view. Like there's just gaps. But you watch other movies from that era, and it's like, hey, this is actually really solid. Right. For that era of action movies, like the gaps are, you wouldn't watch it in the time that it was released and go, oh, there's a gap here. That wasn't very well explained. It's just, it, it's good. It's perfectly good. And the only issues with it, probably from the originals more than anything, are like when George Lucas went back and like tried to fix some things. Sure. That, sure. I know that wasn't well received. Right. And it felt kind of out of place even yeah. more. But like with the prequels, and A, it dragged. There were some story parts that took yeah. way too long. B Filler being the key word there, filler. Right. B, he introduced so many cool villains right. and just botched it mm-hmm. on each one. Mm-hmm. Like, Darth Maul, when, when you see him for the first time, you're like... One of the coolest looking villains there could be. You're like, that's a Sith Lord. Yes. I could picture another Sith Lord out of Vader. Perfect. Darth Maul. Yes. Easy. Yeah. And yeah. then, great kill for Obi-Wan, but, well, kill for Obi-Wan, but, like, and then he just go, and that's the other thing, too. Yes. He get cut, cuts it in half and they bring him back. I mean, that's a Cuz Comics moment right there. You should have done more with the character to begin with. Yeah. But I, I it just shows, it just shows they wasted it, right? When they're like, wait, 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 wait. We got to find a way to bring him back. No, but he got cut in half. No, right. we got to find a way to bring him back. And we only had Qui-Gon for one movie. Yep. Another example of that. Like, good and bad. We got great characters introduced. Episode, episode two, I'm biased. I really love that movie because that was the Star Wars movie it's I had as a great. kid. Yeah. But. Super entertaining. I did not need. All of the scenes of Anakin and Padme getting married on a separate planet. That had nothing with the final fight, the final battle to start the war. Awesome. Fantastic. Watching Mace Windu cut off Jango Fett's head? No. But, like, I don't... There's just some stuff I'm like, I don't need this in here. And then, obviously, 3 was fantastic. For me, it's very hard. So then you have seven, eight, nine, and those try way too hard to be like the originals and look at where it got us. Yeah. So I think sometimes they just, I just, they don't. They don't answer the question often enough of why. Why does this exist? And, and that's very much a sequels problem. But even the prequels, I think you can challenge them with that question. Like I was talking with my with my brother about this just the other day, about how really episode one shouldn't exist. Episode two should have been episode one. Like we didn't need anything in episode one. Like legitimately, Qui Gon Jinn and I love Liam Neeson. What was the point of his character existing? Why not instead start us with episode two, Obi-Wan with Anakin as his Padawan? Well, why not start there? And you, so you didn't waste Maul. So you could still have time. Gives you more time and opportunity to hang out with Darth Maul. Gives you more time to hang out with uh, General Grievous, Al Dooku. Like three fantastic villains. Now, instead of them being abbreviated, now you've got that much more time with them. So really, I think the biggest mistake the prequels made was that episode one existed. Take it out. It doesn't need to exist. Right. And, it's, and it's the same problem I have. We talked a little bit with Sam Raimi. Like the problem I had with Raimi, yep. fantastic with single characters. Right. But when he had a couple of villains, and I know it's yep. not all his fault because yep. I know for well, a I was fact on him. Sony forced Venom yes. on him 100%. He did yep. not want Venom. Yep. But at the same time, because of that, he did not know how to balance Sandman, yep. Harry Osborn, right. and Venom. Yep. So, and here, Star Wars, it felt like George Lucas was like, okay, let's just introduce all these cool Sith guys and then just one per each. Like, Grievous... Fantastic. And he's not even a Sith Lord. He's just some robot dude with four arms right. and collects the lightsabers of Jedi he's murdered. It's fantastic. 
Because that's a, all I need. I'm sold on Grievous. Right. Like, you mm-hmm. won't take the time to flesh these characters out, and it's frustrating. And Grievous should have had an awesome origin that we could have seen instead of he's just there. Right? Right. Like, that's a great character just when he's there, but let's see how he became what he is. Like, that, that'd that be phenomenal. Darth Maul didn't get dialogue. That's pretty silly. I, I think it would have been better if we could have actually heard from the guy once in a great while. Dooku, if the Clone Wars cartoon is to be believed, was a force. It was an absolute force of not just you know, literal force abilities and lightsaber skills, but of manipulation, right? Of building support for the separatist movement. And in his own way was deceived by Palpatine. So there's some rich characters there to explore. I'm serious. I think if it could have been done, or if you could go back and do it again, episode one just doesn't exist. You start with episode two, and then you have a different episode two. And episode three can still play out exactly the way that it did. Just have more time with the characters that we really enjoy. And, you know, we, we've been very focused on the villains, but they in, they introduced an entire Jedi Council. Yep. And Plo Koon hit Fisto. Two really cool yep. characters. Uh, Ki Adamunde or whatever, the guy with the really yep. large forehead, yep. also a cool-looking dude, right? right? Like You just don't get time with them. And They're just cool-looking characters that get smoked. You don't get to see. Right. And look, Clone Wars, that's where Clone Wars comes in. They do yeah. a great job. Kit Fisto and Plo Koon get their own episodes. Right. Fantastic. Right. But I shouldn't have to watch through all of this cartoon yeah. to get it. Yeah. And again, I know, don't, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying Clone Wars is bad because Clone Wars is good to me. But I think. Well, let's bring it back to the original question of why is it exhausted? Well, it's like you have to, as the consumer, as the fan, you have to chew through so much content to get to it's like the tootsie the tootsie pop it's like how many looks did it take to get to the center of the freaking tootsie pop it's like takes a lot of effort to get to that chewy center of goodness and people might also be like well riley you watch the mcu you know how much time you put in that right but here's the thing star wars is essentially the same thing yeah over and over again. Yep. And at least with Marvel, I have Spider-Man, who's a wall-crawling teenager who swings from webs. Yep. And then I have Iron Go Man. Right. Right. I have Iron Man, who's a billionaire who built his own suit. I have yep. Hulk, a guy that just gets angry and then yep. turns into roided out green. Like, that's all different. And their stories are going to be very unique to them. Yes. With Star Wars, I'm always going to get a Jedi versus a Sith character. Yeah. I'm always go- in the main Star Wars. And... Don't get me wrong, that's great, but there's nothing, it doesn't feel unique enough for me. Uh, that's, that's a very fair critique. So, yeah. I, and I think that's where the repetitiveness gets. Like, even with Mando, season three, yep. look, Mando is almost, is great. I love Mando, it's different. Yep. But when they introduce clones again. Mm. I'm like, mm. can we get away yep. from clones? Right. For the love of God, right. we, we are always doing clones. Into old things. Yeah. Like even the like yeah. sequels shat on clones, but they still brought still it in nine. Them. It's so still still used, used them. them. With Palpatine, like, away from them. We've had clones in literally every main. Doesn't it? Isn't it fascinating how it all comes back to? Do you have, and I mean when I say it, it all coming back, I mean Star Wars and Marvel, DC, it all comes back to, do you have a story that's worth telling or not? Like, do you or do you not? Because if you do, and by worth telling, I mean, hey, this is something that's something new, or it's being presented in a new way. But if you're just repeating what's already been done, we don't, we just don't need that. If we can go back and re- we can go back and rewatch what's already been done and enjoy that. But if you're going to take the time to produce this movie, this show, whatever the case may be, man, it better have a story that's worth my time and energy to watch. Like I said earlier, I watched the new Batman movie. That's a character that probably doesn't actually need any more movies. Like there's been, he, he's had his time. Like if all of a sudden there was a, there was an absolute 
just outlawing of new Batman movies. Like, you're just done. That would actually be okay because there's been plenty and they've been phenomenal. And yet, and yet, this most recent Batman movie found a worthwhile story to tell as it pertained to that character. They presented a familiar character in a new way with a different story than what we had seen previously, what we'd seen Batman, the character, go through, and it was phenomenal. But unless you're going to have a story worth telling, don't bother, quite frankly. Like just, just pass. Give it time. You don't have to do it. And I mean, think about the last these last Star Wars shows that have done well. Yep. You have Ahsoka. Yep. Now, well, she was a Jedi. She's no longer a Jedi. Yep. And she's not a Sith either. Right. So that is a whole new tract for that. Yep. For a... It's, it's, a it's, 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 it's like she's Jedi and Jason. Right. But it's just enough of a twist where it's like, okay, now there's something unique here. Right. And she's not following the Jedi Order. Right. She's doing what she believes is the right, right. thing to do. Yep. And that's what's great about it because it's like, oh, you don't have to answer to an entire council. Correct. And you've seen Anakin turn into Darth Vader. Yep. Great for your character. Fantastic. Yeah. Yep. Then you have Mandalorian, which the lore of Mandalore, phenomenal, beautiful. You, you're right. in, you're going through the bounty hunting aspect of yeah. Star Wars, yeah. which everybody loved Boba Fett in the original. Everybody wanted more Boba Fett. Right. Not anymore. But at the time before, like, so this is great. Another set. Right? Oh. And I haven't seen it, but Andor has been well received. Yes. You look at Rogue One. Right, Rogue mm-hmm. One, phenomenal. Mm-hmm. But no, outside of Ahsoka, there aren't really Jedi. And look, yeah. I want Jedi because I I want lightsabers. So that's half the, the the pull of Star Wars. Sure. But if you're going to that Jedi like Jedi Sith thing, if they ever do another one, which they will, I know they'll, they will. they'll do another yeah, movie. Be another one. Get away from Skywalkers. Get away from clones. To be honest, what I would want, I want like. Prequel, 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 yep. go way back when yep. Jedi and Sith were everywhere. Right. And just, I would love to watch, like, a character, like, the main character just have to deal with the pulls of each side. Correct. You know how uninspiring it was to watch Ilo Ren just go back to the good side? There was nothing there for me. It should have stayed bad. And then yep. the weird, it, like, we could, we could talk about this for hours. We really could. But that that's my problem. Like, it's just, it's repetitive when it comes. And they don't, they don't try to get too creative with it. Yep. And they think they're being creative, but they're eating their own tail. Yep. No, they're, they're, there's not enough creativity. I think part of what's so admirable and impressive about Rogue One, the movie, about Andor, the show, about Ahsoka, the show, and about the Mandalorian show, is that it has, it's proof of concept that you don't need lightsabers for great Star Wars content. And I agree with you. That is what I first think of when I think of Star Wars. Like, that's just kind of embedded in my mind is, oh, there's lightsabers involved. But it doesn't have to be. The case so there's a there's a balance to be found there like they can be involved but they don't have to be the the core piece i want it to like i want them to still be very much involved mm-hmm. but i want them to i also don't want them to be neutered i feel like they got neutered in a sense of like sure people get cut and they don't die you know what I'm saying? Yes. If I take a laser to yes. the abdomen, yes. I should be dead. Yeah, you can't you can't cheat like you, that. Your only argument is that it burned as well when it went through and it stopped the bleeding. So it's a bad weapon. Not a very good weapon. Interesting. Bring that swords that right. like that's just that's where I'm at. And look, Mandalorian, they did kind of bring the sabers back with the black lightsaber. Right. Right, the old dark saber. No, but I mean, look at Obi One. Obi One, that struggled. Yeah, it should have. Yeah, but it struggled. And what was the best part of that movie? Obi One versus Darth Vader. Why? And to get it. Why? Because of the already established relationship yeah. between Obi One and Vader, right. and the fact that Obi One kicked his ass mm-hmm. and can still kick his ass. So <laughs> that's it. 
Okay. Like the rest of it was not good. Right. Right. Yeah. So, so nominal answer to the question. Good for you. 